How's it going? Welcome back to James Chats. Today, we're gonna make something, and we're gonna make something really cool. And the thing that we are going to make is Mulan's sword from the original animated movie. And I am so excited because it's such an iconic piece. And I found this file on Thingiverse from an artist who, who 3D modeled the whole thing and made it in a way that it could be 3D printed and put together and I had to do it. And that is what we are about to embark on. Now we're gonna pretend like this intro is being filmed before I start making the sword and not, you know, several weeks after the fact. No, 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 not yet, not yet. Not yet. So just, uh, just go along with it. And with that, we need to start printing this thing. A couple of bits of information. I'm using the Ender 3 Pro 3D printer and I'm printing all of the pieces at a 0.2 layer height. I would love to do 0.1 but that would end up being about 100 hours of printing, so I went with a 0.2 layer height. This printer has been going for 50 hours straight. But we are here, and we have all of our pieces printed and ready to go. Now, the real work begins. The way that this file works is it's sort of split down the middle. Once the halves are like together, there's little inserts and notches that slide together. I need to really sand down a lot of a lot of these portions so that they can actually fit together nicely and then we're going to get to gluing. So it's been about an hour and I just spent a lot of time sanding down these pieces that go into the, the guard and the handle as well as trying to sand out these little notches here. Now I'm going to be gluing basically all of the halves together and then I'm gonna to need to do some more sanding on the notches and then we'll probably be doing some wood filler. Now this is to fill in all of the cracks and crevices that are, you can't really sand them to hide them. So this will fill in those cracks and then we can sand this down. It's a process, it's a lot of work, but when it's all said and done, it should look great. For the glue, I'm going to be trying to use this Gorilla Super Glue. It's the uh, Impact Touch formula. Alrighty. Got a bunch of these guys. So we're going to let that set and dry. Next. Grab a little clip here and squish it together. Okay. The glue has set and uh, sure you need 24 hours for it to fully cure but this glue holds pretty quickly and pretty strong. So I'm confident just going for it. And I actually already started sanding this piece down. This is the guard as well as the handle and the, the pommel that goes on the end of, of the handle here. I did sand this down and now that fits perfectly in there. I just have to do the same thing to all of these notches because as it stands, they don't fit. Instead of making you watch me do that for an hour, I'm just gonna do some movie magic and we'll be done with that portion. We have all of the pieces now fitting together. Obviously they're very <laughs> wobbly right now because I have to glue them all together, but they fit. So I waited about 45 minutes and let this set and it's, pre it's pretty solid. I'm actually, I'm kind of surprised that it's not floppier than it is. So it worked out pretty good. Ow. It looks great. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this guy and I'm gonna start sanding this down a bit. I will also be cleaning up the guard a little bit more. Then we're gonna get to the wood filler. So let's sand this up and start. My it's coming together. It's coming together and I'm really excited. It is now time to apply the wood filler. I've never done this before, but I'm excited to try it. It should work out beautifully. I'm just gonna use my finger. I'm probably gonna actually put this along the entire blade um, because you can hear that. Those are the layer lines on the blade itself and I'd like it to have a smooth finish. It takes about 15 to 20 minutes to set before you can start sanding it, so it's actually pretty quick. This is a, a very messy process. But you know what? Sometimes it feels good to get your hands dirty, you know? That's one of the things I, I love about crafting is that 
You know, it's 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 hands on. It's hands on. You you get dirty, and you make something cool. I decided that yes, I will be doing the entirety of the blade in this wood filler. It's using a lot of wood filler, but there's actually there's a, there's a good amount left here. Don't worry about being a little a little generous here. I covered the entire blade. It is all dried up now, so we are going to start sanding. We're gonna start with 220. I am now switching up to a 400 grit sandpaper. I'm just gonna keep working my way up. I can feel the transitions a little bit. I'm not crazy about that. It's not gonna be perfect. You know, and this is the first time I, I've ever done this, so. I am now done with the 800 grit sandpaper, and I think I'm actually gonna call it there for now and tomorrow I will be priming it and then I'll be sanding it some more. So don't worry, we're not <laughs> we're not done with the sanding yet. All right, see you tomorrow for the priming portion. Okay, it is the next day and I'm about to put this uh, filler primer on all of the parts. It allows me to fill in the, the small cracks that are still there as well as sand it down. So this is kind of like uh, a finer version of what we were doing with the wood filler, so I'm just gonna start applying this to all the parts, and yeah, let's do it. Gotta make sure we do multiple thin coats so that it doesn't get uh, goopy. Now that the parts have been primed, I applied about four coats of primer to this. It is time to return once more to the sanding process. This won't take quite as long, I don't think. It's still gonna take a while. It's still gonna be a decent amount of sanding, especially with the, the guard piece here with all of its uh, nooks and crannies and stuff, but uh, it should be a little bit quicker. And I'm gonna start, I think I'm gonna start at like a six or 800 grit sandpaper and then work my way up to 1500 and maybe even up to 3000 just to go crazy, <laughs> just to go crazy. Um, yeah, let's, let's get to work. <laughs> Doing this makes me feel like I'm, I'm sharpening an actual sword. <laughs> oh, that is so smooth. Whoa. Wow. That's amazing. <laughs> I was not ready for it to smooth out that much. It is a new day. And last night I painted the handle. So the handle's actually good to go. I just need to paint the pommel, the guard, and the blade. I did sand these down quite a bit. Not as much as the blade though. And that's because I'm okay with these being a bit of a less reflective gold. Whereas the blade, I wanna to try to make it as reflective as possible. It's gonna be hard to achieve with spray paint, but I'm gonna do the best I can with what I've got. And this thing, I sanded a lot. <laughs> I mean, so much sanding, all the way up to 3000 grit sandpaper. And you might be able to see some, like my face reflected in it. Now this is just the primer. I still have to paint it. And it's not perfect. It's not perfect. You can see some of the seams and that will probably show through the paint as well, but it's pretty darn good. Now it's time to get some paint on these. I already got the handle, so I'm gonna tape that off so I can paint the pommel gold, the guard gold, and then the blade silver. So let's head outside before I lose all of my sunlight and get some paint down. For paints, uh, I already did the handle, but this is the black that I used. It is a Rust-Oleum 2X flat black. It's a paint and primer, and I just want a flat black look for it, and I had this can laying around, so that's what I used for the handle. Then for the guard and the pommel, I have this uh, also Rust-Oleum uh, gold. It's a brilliant metal finish, and this is another can that I had laying around already, so hopefully that looks good. And finally, we have uh, another Rust-Oleum metallic. This one's the, the silver, again, brilliant metal finish, and it is, once again, another can I had laying around. I had all three of these cans. I didn't, I didn't buy any spray paint specifically for this project, so uh, I'm hoping these look good. So let's get to painting. And 
this is the final product. We have ourselves Mulan Sword, and I'm really happy with how it turned out. Is it perfect? No, far from it. But you know what? It's pretty darn good, considering this is one of my first real attempts at something of this scale. It's my first time ever using wood filler on a 3D print. It was one, of, really one of the first paint jobs I've ever done on a 3D print before. So all things considered, I think it turned out great. Things I would do differently. One, I would buy a palm sander. You know, a sanding machine <laughs> that is powered from an outlet, not powered by my shoulder, because this was a tremendous amount of sanding and there should have been more sanding at the first step. That takes me to part number two. I would have spent a lot more time sanding the print itself before doing any of the wood filler, primer, any of that, because the, the layer lines are just still so prominent. The wood filler, while it did do a really good job, I didn't get it everywhere. So that's why there are so many parts of the blade that are, are showing through the paint job. And number three, which is kind of related to that, is that I probably would have done another phase of wood filler on the blade after I'd primed it and realized that I had all of these, these spots showing through. I would have tried to, to remedy those instead of just going forward. Part of that came down to just time, because I've already invested so much time into this project. And another part of that is that I'm okay with it looking like this. I, I, th I think this still looks pretty dope. Will I revisit the paint job on the blade? I might, which is why I left this unglued. There is a chance that I might get, you know, a palm sander, sand this down and redo the paint job on the blade. But until then, I'm, I'm pretty satisfied with how this turned out. All right, and there you have it. Mulan Sword from the original animated feature. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you guys are thinking about doing this yourself, hopefully you learned from my mistakes and from my successes. I will be leaving links to everything that I use to make this sword possible in the video description. Those are affiliate links, so if you decide to make this project and you end up needing some of those supplies, I encourage you to use those links because it helps support this channel. And if you have suggestions for anything else you would like to see me make, let me know in the comment section down below because I like making things. One, because it's fun, and two, because I get a cool thing out of it. I mean, I have a sword now. <laughs> I have an iconic sword just chilling in, in, in my apartment. And that's cool. All right, I'm gonna go. Thank you all so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, give it a thumbs up, subscribe, do all that fun stuff. And I will see you all in the next video.